Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlockhauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for October the 14th, 2024 on this Monday. So taking a look at the GO-16 RGB false color satellite imagery provided by CyclonicWX.com on Invest94L, which is located about 40 degrees west in longitude, right around 18 to 19 degrees north in latitude. You can see it right here. This is going to be impacting the islands in the next three to five days as potentially a developing tropical depression, tropical storm, or if not, now a hurricane potentially on some of the intensity guidance. And this could then impact portions of, say, the Dominican Republic, as well as the southeastern portion of the Bahamas, including for Jamaica in about 7 to 10 days. So make sure you guys are watching this as this develops because this has that ceiling that we don't like to see right now. Now, when taking a look at the latest 7-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida, you can see there is now a 60% chance of tropical development with Invest 94L over the next two to seven days, this was up from 40% just yesterday. So our chances on this are increasing and people in the Northeastern Caribbean, the Southwestern Atlantic really need to be watching this system because we could be dealing with theoretically another named storm on our list of names for this hurricane season and it has been a very busy one for late September now so far into the middle of October and it doesn't seem to stop anytime soon so make sure you all are paying very close attention to the forecast as this evolves because again we are at 60%. So now the question really remains will this become our next tropical depression? tropical storm or hurricane in the next seven days over the northeastern caribbean and the southwestern atlantic well with that being said let's take a look at our gfs model this look at our surface wind plot showing us what the winds are going to be doing at the surface and so the greener yellower colors indicate stronger winds and the lighter blue colors well, actually, in this case, darker blues indicate lighter winds. So going forward in time here in the next, say, four days. So this is about four days right here, Friday morning, October the 18th. We do have what appears to be a tropical storm that develops here with winds of about 35, about 40 to 50 miles per hour, roughly. So this would be a low-grade tropical storm at this given time on the GFS model, the American model. Now, when we go out to day five here, you can see how the system all evolves. And this gets pretty close here to portions of Puerto Rico. In fact, if we do take a look here at the Lesser Antilles and we zoom closer into that, you can see this does pass just to the north of Puerto Rico in a little less than five days. So this would be a Friday night, early Saturday morning, potential close call here with Puerto Rico. It passes very close or on top of some of the U.S. and British Virgin Islands by Friday afternoon. So keep that in mind. And this would be a very strong tropical storm with winds of about 65 to 70 miles per hour. And it would become a hurricane perhaps in about four and a half to five days as it moves in between of Puerto Rico and say the Dominican Republic, but there's a little bit of uncertainty here. And just showing you all that, this is the 06Z run here, showing us that the system was a little to the north. If we look at the 0Z run from last night, it was a little slower and just about uh, pretty much to the north. And then yesterday's 18Z run had this at a stronger uh, category one hurricane. But in today's run, it's a little further southwest and it is in between these islands of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic by Saturday early morning. Now, after that point, it does slam into the eastern portion of the Dominican Republic where we have the tall mountains. So this would be a substantial rainfall maker and strong wind producer with winds that are at least tropical storm intensity here with winds about 40 to 70 miles per hour. And then it really disintegrates once it runs into those mountains. So the question about that is, will that happen? And again, there's a little bit of uncertainty in the forecast, but early model guidance does suggest that that will likely happen according to the GFS model. 
Now, the European model thinks that it's not going to happen. And so this look at the ECMW I've showing us our low-level wind plot. You can see our system does struggle and it moves a little bit more to the north of Puerto Rico. This would not mean a landfall at all. And this would be devoiding any areas like the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico in the first six or so days. And this is a slower output here from the Euro versus a faster one from the GFS. In fact, it would not impact until the Turks and Caicos Islands until next Monday. So a week from today, this would be about a little over seven days out, seven and a half to eight days out from a landfall point potentially here. But again, there's a little bit of uncertainty. The euro is still being bullish. Now the Canadian model also really similar here, north of Puerto Rico, safely north of that, then our GFS model that is much further south. And so when we play this through, you can see it does become a strong tropical storm on the, the Canadian model. And this is through the next five to six days. So this would be for the weekend in early next week on October the 18th through the 20th. And then October the 21st here, um, literally two months away at this point from winter time, believe it or not, we're getting closer and closer to that. We can see here that this has winds of about 40 to 50 miles an hour. And then it, it, it mysteriously bounces back. It hits this and goes out like that. Kind of like a boomerang or it hits a wall here of a, a strong westerly wind shear and westerly flow. And the system does that. It goes out to the north and the northeast eventually. And then it could smack in portions there or pretty much the small island of Bermuda. For Wednesday, but that's very far out. I'm not even beginning to look out that far. I don't know even why I'm doing that in this video, but you can see here that this could have a pretty close call on portions of the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, and even for um, yeah, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and Jamaica. That's what I meant to say there. And the eastern half of Cuba. We really got to watch this. There's no set in stone forecast. Now, unfortunately, there is a very high ceiling for this tropical area of interest. Invest 94L that we're tracking in this video. And this is the H Wharf model. I shouldn't be looking at the H Wharf this soon and this far out in time. But it gives us a realm of possibilities with intensity and location as well, right? So our global models are not too thrilled on this system yet. But our H Wharf model, which did, I would say it didn't do the best on Milton, but it did pretty well on Helene and others this year. So putting this into motion, we can see that the system does struggle. It doesn't really get its act together over the next three days. This struggles because of drier air that is in place we're not talking a whole lot about wind shear here so the wind shear is going to be fairly light with the system instead what we're dealing with is all that dry environmental air and when we look at the plot here you can see all of this brown here brown here and brown to the south and this is kind of in its own little space of moisture this is not in a very good environment this is not what you want to see if you're looking for a rapidly strengthening system but because of the wind shear that is very light here, this might be able to strengthen fairly quickly. And as we go out to day four, the system is able to develop an inner core pretty quickly. But again, there's a lot of uncertainty on exactly how this is going to play out. But there's been some strong runs in the past here on the H Wharf model showing a pretty robust inner core structure forming in about four days from now. This goes to the north of these islands, which is good. So the fact of any tropical storm force winds will probably not be realized on these islands but guess what happens this gets very close to the Domin Dominican Republic as a major hurricane here with winds of about 115 plus miles an hour maybe getting close to category 4 intensity but this is the only outlier we have if we look at our halves a parent you can see there is nothing there in fact this would be over Central America or halves B parent pretty much in the same area, not showing any tropical development whatsoever. So again, there's a lot of uncertainty in the forecast, and that's why this is a fragile situation. Until we get an inner core structure and a circulation develop, we're probably going to see wild outcomes on the model. But just so, so you know, there is a potential worst case scenario here of this becoming a hurricane of any category. Now, looking at our ATCF guidance here, this is basically our 
all of our global models and our hurricane models put together into a spaghetti plot. And what we have here is that the system will likely be missing Puerto Rico at this given time. But don't be surprised if we get shifts further south or shifts further north on this forecast, okay? But either way, this is in striking distance of the Dominican Republic over here, and even for our Turks and Caicos Islands in the Bahamas. And not to mention that if this curves down like this and it smacks into Jamaica, you could also get impacted with some heavy rainfall. So don't sleep on this system, folks, just because that, oh, all of our models are north of Jamaica or north of Puerto Rico, or north of the Windward Islands, or the Dominican Republic. I'm not doing this to get views or anything to keep your guys' attention. We just can't, we don't have a set in stone forecast, because for one thing, this doesn't have much deep convection. This could drift much further west and do this, like the GFS is showing, or this could go a little further north and avoid any land areas completely, but maybe later on, it gets close to the eastern U.S. coast. That's the concern here that we need to be aware of with this system, okay? Now, our intensity forecast, let me zoom in on this to show you how strong this could get. Again, there's that worst case scenario that the um, the H wharf, or which is called the HWFI, has been showing a major hurricane for the last few runs already, while our majority of models here are still indicating a Category 1 or 2 hurricane and a tropical storm. Because of this, my intensity forecast has been raised from the last one, but is below most of the guidance. And I do forecast this to become a tropical storm in about four days or so, maybe three days as soon as that, with winds of about 50 to 60 miles per hour for right now. And I'm not going to pre-name systems yet until we get actual official updates from the National Hurricane Center until they put out a cone of uncertainty. But for right now, this would become our next name storm, which would be um, a tropical storm or even a category one hurricane. But anyways, if you found this video very helpful and informative, please consider hitting the subscribe button right now. If you did not subscribe yet to the YouTube channel, hit the like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media. We hit over 700 likes in yesterday's video. Let's see if we can get this video out to 100 likes by sharing this. The YouTube algorithm really likes share um, likes when you guys share, like, and subscribe to the channel. It's positive signals that the YouTube algorithm likes to recommend videos. So otherwise, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with you more on Invest94L tomorrow.